Welcome to this tutorial on discrete probability distributions. Remember, a discrete variable is a variable that has a finite number of values with nothing in between. For example, the number of cars in the parking lot is either 1 or 2 or 3, but there can't be 1.3 cars in the parking lot. There are two types of discrete probability distributions that we will talk about in this tutorial. The first type is a table with the probabilities associated with some random variable x, say the throwing of a die. The second type of discrete probability distribution we will discuss uses a mathematical function to compute probabilities. Before we move on to our discussion about discrete probability distributions, we must first define the term random variable. A random variable is a description of the outcome of an experiment. There are two types of random variables we are concerned with, discrete random variables and continuous random variables. In this tutorial, we will be concerned only with discrete variables. A discrete random variable is a variable that takes on a finite number of values or an infinite sequence of numbers with nothing in between. For example, we can look at how many cars are in the parking lot and get one or two cars, but nothing in between. If we roll a die, we can either get a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, and again, nothing in between. On the other hand, a continuous random variable can take on any numerical value in an interval of numbers. So if we look at the weight of an item, the weight can take on any value depending on how precise the scale we measure it with. Here is a table of discrete random variables. We can see that if our experiment consists of rolling a die, then the random variable is the number we roll, and the possible values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. That is a discrete distribution of numbers. The number is either a 1, or a 2, or a 3, and so on. Nothing in between. If we are inspecting a shipment of parts to see if they are defective or not, then we would have two possible outcomes. Either they are defective, or they are not. We can assign numerical values to these outcomes, 0 if the part is defective, 1 if it is not defective. This is still a discrete distribution since the values can either be 0 or 1 and nothing in between. We can look at the cars that are parked in our lot on a given day and count them so that the random variable x would be the number of cars in the lot. The possible values would be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, theoretically an infinite sequence of numbers, but it is still discrete since there are no fractions of a car. It's either 1, 2, and so on. This table is a table of continuous random variables. Remember, we said a continuous random variable can take on any numerical value within some interval. So, for example, if our experiment consists of weighing the contents of a cereal box, and the maximum the box will hold is 16 ounces, then the random variable is the weight, and the possible values of x can be any value between 0 and 16. If the experiment is to measure the salary of new hires, with a hiring range of between fifteen dollars and $25,000, then the random variable is the salary, and the possible x values can take on any value between fifteen dollars and $25,000. If the experiment is defined as changing the oil in a car and the random variable is time, then x can take on any value from zero minutes if the car doesn't need an oil change to some undetermined amount of time, so we can simply say x is greater than or equal to zero. These are just some of the examples of a continuous random variable. We will talk more about continuous random variables in another tutorial, but it's important to distinguish between the two types here. So now that we understand what a discrete random variable is, we are ready to develop a probability distribution for random variables. This probability distribution will tell us how the probabilities are distributed over the values of the random variable. Let's start with a simple example of rolling a die. This table shows the probability distribution for the number rolled. We can see listed all the possible outcomes of rolling a die and the probabilities associated with each outcome. So for example, if we roll a 3, we can see the probability of rolling a 3 is 1 out of 6 or 1 sixth. We can see in this table a listing of all the possible outcomes with their associated probabilities. The example here, rolling a die, is a discrete uniform distribution since all of the possible outcomes have the same probability of occurring. For discrete random variables, we use the probability function f of x to denote the probability of each random variable. So for example, if x is rolling the number 3, 
then we would write f of 3 for the probability of rolling a 3, which is equal to 1 sixth. For a uniform probability distribution, the probability functions are described of f of x is equal to 1 divided by n, where n is the number of possible values. So if there are six possible values or six possible outcomes, as in the case of rolling a die, then 1 over n is 1 over 6, and the function of x is 1 over 6 for all of them. So what we have seen listed in tabular format is called a probability distribution. A probability distribution for a discrete random variable is a mutually exclusive listing of all possible numerical outcomes for the random variable and their associated probability of occurrence. And that's what we just saw, a listing of all the possible outcomes of the die and the associated probability of its occurrence. Here is another probability distribution. This one is for the number of orders we have for a product. We can see the number of orders are mutually exclusive categories ranging from 0 to 5 orders, and the probabilities associated with each outcome are 0 0.05 for no orders or 0 orders, 0 0.10 for 1 order, 0.45 for 2 orders, and so on. We can take the tabular listing of, a, of the orders per day and create a graphical representation of the information. Both the tabular format and the graphical representation show the same information, the distribution of orders per day and their associated probabilities. Since the outcomes are discrete categories, this is called a discrete probability distribution. The expected value or mean of a random variable is a measure of central tendency or a measure of location for the random variable. The formula for the expected value is shown in the red box. We write e parentheses x, which is read as e of x, is equal to mu, the mean, which is equal to sigma, the sum of each x subscript i, times the probability of that x subscript i. So what we're saying is that to get the expected value of x, we take each possible outcome and multiply it by its probability of occurrence and then add it up. So let's calculate the expected value of the number of orders per day. We have the first column where we have the number of orders. We have the second column with the associated probabilities. Now let's make a third column and we'll take each x subscript i and multiply it by its associated probabilities. So we will take each number in the first column, multiply it by the second column, and we get a third column. We then add up all the numbers in the third column and get 2.55. 2.55 is the expected number of orders over time per day. So if we're open 365 days a year, we would expect to have 930.75 orders in a given year. That is 365 times 2.55 equals 930.75. So that is the expected value of orders in a given year. 2.55 would be the expected number of orders in a given day. We can compute the variance for a probability distribution by multiplying each possible square difference by its corresponding probability and then summing up those products. We can then get the standard deviation by taking the positive square root of the number we got for the variance. The formula for calculating the variance is shown here. The variance of x is written as var parentheses x is equal to lowercase sigma squared, that's the same symbol we used for the variance when we discussed it in measures of dispersion, and that is equal to capital sigma, which is a summation sign, x minus mu in parentheses squared times the probability function of x. So to calculate the variance of x, we will have to take each x from the mean, square those values, multiply them by the probability of each x occurring, and then sum it up. Let's see how this is done. To calculate the variance of a discrete random variable, let's use the example we have just been using for no number of orders per day. I put the formula in a blue box for you to refer to. We see that the first thing we need to do is to write down all the x's, so I have a column of all the possible outcomes of x, the number of orders per day. Next, we have a column for x minus mu, since that is in the parentheses of the formula for the variance. The third column is x minus mu squared, so we take the second column and square it to get the third column. In the fourth column, we list all the probabilities that were associated with each column. And then in the fifth column, we take the product of the third and the fourth columns, so we multiply each number in the third column 
by the corresponding number in the fourth column. Take a look at the formula and see how it breaks down into these five columns. Now to get the variance, look back at the formula. We still need to add the fifth column, so we sum up all the numbers and we get 1.6475, and that is the number of the variance. Again, if you look at the formula in the blue box, you can see how this number is derived from that formula. We broke down the formula into smaller pieces by creating five columns and then adding the results to get the variance. The standard deviation for a discrete random variable is the same as the standard deviation we learned to calculate earlier. We simply take the positive square root of the variance to get the standard deviation. So the square root of 1.6475 is 1.2835. The standard deviation is measured in the same units as the original discrete variable, so it can be used better to compare and analyze measurements than the variance, which is measured in squared units and therefore much more difficult to interpret. This concludes the tutorial on discrete probability distributions and discrete random variables. Please make sure to watch the next tutorial on the binomial distribution. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you learned something.